Hey guys, Super Tender Buff here, and I'm here with another video for you today. Here, I'm with 5 main developer tips for new iPhone SDK developers. First tip is to always back up. It's really important to back up all your data securely in a, lo in a location somewhere secure. If your data gets corrupted or deleted or something goes wrong, then you've always got the backup to get all your data back and get developing again. Especially if you're developing commercial applications, you want to make sure you have backups and you want to make sure you back up regularly. If you don't back up, then lo and behold, one day, you never know, your data might be deleted and you've got to start your application all over again, which is a real pain in the ass. So don't do that. Always back up. The next tip is performance. Always, always make one of your goals when making an application performance. If your application crashes a lot, or if it's slow, for it uses too much RAM or CPU power, then it's going to degrade the user experience, and Apple will most likely reject that application. So make sure you focus on performance and get the application running quickly and smoothly on the iPhone or the iPod Touch or the iPad, whichever device it's meant for. Uh, so yeah, that is one of the re one of the many many reasons why applications get rejected off the App Store is mostly because they crash too much or they're too buggy or they're just slow. You know. If the user experience is degraded, Apple will reject your application. So make sure performance is, uh, you know, you make sure your application is actually running smoothly and has no uh, crash. It doesn't crash or doesn't have any kind of errors in the application as well. The next step is debug and testing. Debugging your code is very important. Make sure you don't have any errors in your code, and make sure if you do have errors that you go and check your code, debug it, find where the errors are, and correct them. Uh, having uh, you know minor errors can end up with memory leakages, which can uh, you know lower the application performance, or can end up in the application crashing, or maybe certain features not working. So make sure you always debug your code and make sure your application is running smoothly, and you know and all the features are working properly as you stated in your application description. Testing is also another very important part of developing. Always make sure you have a real iPhone or iPod Touch or iPad to test your application on especially if your application is hardware specific. For example, if your application uses the camera or accelerometer in the iPhone, then you have to have to test your application on the real iPhone, because the iPhone simulator doesn't have access to a camera or the accelerometer. So make sure that you really have a real iPhone to test your application on, okay? Um, another reason for this is also because you know you want to improve your user experience as much as you can, and sometimes per performance can vary from the iPhone simulator to a real iPhone. Even though it is a simulator, it's still not the real thing. Remember, so it's always always important that you test your application on a real device first before you submit it to Apple. Remember, this is your application in the, the day, and you just want to improve the user experience. So test on a real iPhone. And uh, you, you're one step ahead in uh, making a good application. Next thing is content. By content, there's two types of contents I mean. First of all is optimization. So if your content is specific for an iPhone 4, make sure all the images are high resolution and the application is a high resolution application that supports the full high resolution retina display on the iPhone 4. No, that's pretty obvious, but you want to you want to do that because if you don't do that, um, you know you're gonna. I suppose you, your user experience is not going to be as good as it could be, and you know more chance of application getting rejected. So once again, make sure your content is optimized for the iPhone or the iPod Touch or the iPad. Next thing in content is make sure you don't have any kind of copyrighted content in, um, because obviously that get rejected unless, of course, you have the legal rights and you can prove to Apple. That you're allowed to use that content in your iPhone application. If not, then don't put it in. Simple as. The last thing is developer forums. Yeah, there are just tons of developer forums online, specifically the Apple one provided by Apple, which has just so much developer support. So always check out the developer forums. On the Apple one, there are also Apple engineers who answer your questions and can help you, you know, find solutions to your problems. So really check out developer forums. They're a gold mine and they're full of great help and advice which you can use when you're developing iPhone applications. 
Uh, and lastly, to do with developer forums, there are also tutorial videos online you can check out and blogs like icodeblog.com or you know uh, SimplestyK on YouTube or App Store Mod on YouTube or myself who make Xcode tutorials um, that you can watch and you can you know you can go and use these uh, tutorials in your applications and you know you can you know take take what you've learned and use them in the applications. So they're very useful as well. Uh, so always make sure you check out for developer forums and online sites and blogs and tutorials which help um, when you're trying to develop an application. Okay, so th these are great sites to go and check out. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my videos. I hope this has helped answer some of your questions. Um, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.